All right. Good evening, everybody. It looks like everyone is starting to filter into this session. We are so excited that you're joining us this evening uh, for the Illinois Association for College Admissions Counseling Fair for the, the, one of the sessions for the first night. Just a few housekeeping um, things as we kind of get going this evening. First of all, my name is James. I'll be facilitating um, for us this evening. You are able to utilize the Q&A function in order to ask a question of any of our institutions that are here. Um, just please make sure that you direct that question to the institution that you're wanting to hear from. If you are interested in hearing the answer from all six, you don't have to address it to anyone specifically, but otherwise it just kind of helps to make sure you're getting the um, information you need from whom that you would like it from. Uh, just as a, another reminder, your microphone and camera are off, and so um, the uh, institutions cannot see or hear you. Uh, please feel free to sign up for more sessions. There are sessions that will be going on after this um, presentation as well as tomorrow, and then we will have a recording available for this as well. And so please just kind of keep that in mind. Probably within about a week, um, it will be on the strivescan.com slash Illinois site. Um, just as a quick reference, you are in session B6, and we are going to get that started right now with the University of New Hampshire. So I'm going to turn it over to them. Hey, everyone. Um, my name is Evan Beals. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at the University of New Hampshire. Um, glad to hear that those of you in the Midwest are experiencing some of the same weather that we have up in New England this week. Um, I'm going to share my screen quickly um, and we'll hop through just a few slides here talking about UNH. Um, I'm excited that everyone's chosen to join us today. It's, it's a lot of my colleagues from some really great schools. So um, <clears throat> we'll get started with just a quick review of location. Um, we're located in the seacoast region of New Hampshire. Uh, about 10 minutes away from the ocean, about 40 minutes from the White Mountains of New Hampshire, 45 minutes from Boston, Massachusetts. Um, we do have an Amtrak train service that gets students in and out of Boston within about 45 minutes as well. Um, so some really great access in and out of some metropolitan areas like Boston and Portland, Maine. But here at, at UNH, you're in a classic New England college town. Um, really old historic buildings here in Durham and in a neighboring town called Portsmouth, right on the coast. Um, our population is made up of about 13,000 undergraduate students, about 2,500 graduate students. That imbalance is really important as we talk about kind of parts of our process and what that means for you as a student and your experience here. Um, most of our students come from out of state. So even though we're a public flagship large-scale institution, um, you're in good company coming from a little further away. Our students come from 48 different states and 70 countries from around the world. Um, so again, it, you're in great company uh, coming here to the University of New Hampshire. We have over 200 undergraduate degree programs that are spread out across five college divisions. Um, the largest college division on campus would be our College of Liberal Arts. You have programs like English, Psychology, our Fine Art and Performing Arts programs, um, and many more. The College of Life Science and Agriculture, the College of Health and Human Services, the College of Engineering and Physical Sciences, and then our Paul College of Business and Economics. Um, again, over 200 degree programs really spread from A to Z, Anthropology and Accounting, um, all the way to zoology. So lots and lots to choose from at UNH, everything from um, associate's degrees all the way through doctoral level programs as well. Uh, so some really great opportunities for you as a student. What really is important as an undergrad and, and in our, our realm and in our community is that UNH is focused on research. So we remember that imbalance of graduate and undergraduate students with the focus on undergraduate education at UNH we have land, sea, and space grant status from the federal government, which just means that there's publicly funded research for all of our students accessible, um, a lot of times starting in your first or second year on campus. And the, as you can see from the, the photos laid in the back there, there's lots going on. We have agricultural-based research, we have um, research in the oceans in the middle, and really strong programs with NASA. So those are some pretty scientific-based programs, but we also have research areas in some of our liberal arts and humanities degrees as well. Um, UNH is ranked in the top 20% nationally for research funding and our undergraduate research conference, kind of that area for you to showcase your work and, and your 
uh, research with your faculty members um, is one of the oldest and largest of its kind in the country. Last year, over 2,000 of our students participated in this undergraduate research conference. So that is what we would consider probably the signature academic experience on campus. UNH is a very traditional um, residential campus community. Um, if you think about uh, like the stereotypical college life, maybe like TV shows and movies that you can think of, a lot of times UNH fits the bill for, for what you're picturing. A cute, quaint downtown area with coffee shops, locally owned restaurants and all of that kind of stuff um, with old style brick buildings like you can see in the background there. Um, our students sit out on the quad and they toss the frisbee around. They do homework out there, they drink their coffee, they hang hammocks in between the trees. Um, our dining halls are award-winning and they're all locally operated with the majority of our food coming from within a hundred mile radius of campus. And many times there will be New England seafood on the menu. Um, so lots going on in that general area. Um, small town New England community with large scale research opportunity is really definitive of our, of our culture here. The application process is pretty straightforward. Many of you are, are likely sophomores or juniors looking at this process. So you're thinking about coming up in your senior year, November 15th is our early action deadline and February 1st is our regular decision deadline. If we have any seniors in the room right now, um, we have extended our application deadline to March 1st, recognizing that many students um, are still struggling with some COVID related issues and um, a lot's going on. So. You'll see in the application components that test scores are optional. Uh, UNH is a test optional institution and has been. Um, so those will not be required of you uh, moving forward. We really focus on your transcript as the most important part of the ac academic process. And as you can see on the screen here, uh, we obviously have very strong outcomes. Um, we have some measures of our own success However, at UNH, we really see it as our job to support you and your endeavors and however you define that success. Um, many students are going on for um, jobs when they graduate, other students onto public service and volunteer work. So our students are, are, are really engaged in the community. Um, they're socially minded and engaged um, and they really look forward to going out and changing the world. So um, at that point, I will um, kind of wrap up. I'll put my contact information in the screen for you, in the chat for you all, um, but please feel free to ask any questions via that Q&A feature and we'll get those answered for you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And you, just to echo what Evan said at the very end there, please utilize the Q&A feature um, and feel free to address the specific institution that you're wanting to hear from. So moving right along, we are now going to hear from Lincoln College. Hello, so my name is Benita Wynn. I'm the Regional Admissions Counselor for Lincoln College. And Lincoln College, we're about two and a half hours away, so not so far away um, where if you get homesick, you come home on the weekends, but also not so close where your parents can just pop up on you and see what you're doing. Um, we do have Amtrak that comes to the campus, so if you didn't want to necessarily drive or do, uh, don't plan on having a car on campus, the Amtrak, we do shuttle back and forth. It's only a couple of minutes away from our campus. So our requirements are um, a 2.0 GPA, and we are test optional due to COVID. So if you have a 2.0 GPA, uh, you are able to get a scholarship for $1,500. If you did take the SAT or ACT, we recommend you send it in, um, because if you have at least an 860 or a 16, then you would be eligible for an additional $1,500 scholarship, and then it typically goes up from there. So we're small. We have about a thousand students on campus. Average classroom size is about 15 students in a classroom. Uh, we are still um, running visits. So if you would like to visit, I would encourage you all to schedule a visit any day, Monday through Saturday, um, to come down and check out the campus just to see if you like us. Um, in addition to that, we do have support services available for our students. We have the Office of Disability Services. So if you do have an IEP or 504 plan, it's important to disclose that information so that way we can get you the accommodations that you need. Um, if a student has below a 2.0 GPA um, and then you did take the SAT, that definitely helps. But if you do have below a 2.0 GPA, we would still encourage you to apply because we might um, be able to set up an interview with you just to see you know, what happened 
Um, we understand that sometimes students didn't take their freshman or sophomore year seriously or you know had some personal things going on at home. So we uh, would still encourage you to apply to the college. There is no application fee. Um, you submit your application and transcripts, and then we are able to make a decision within uh, 72 hours of receiving your application. We uh, currently have 13 different majors. Um, so we have business uh, management, community and human services, uh, radio, television, and new media, sport management, and quite a few others. We plan on adding three new degrees a year. Uh, so if I did not say a major, if you look on our website and we don't have it, um, stay on lookout, it's a possibility. But in addition to that, we offer two and four year degree options. So if you were considering going to a community college, but you still wanted to get away and get the experience and foundation of being on campus, you have the opportunity to do that at Lincoln College. So you can come with us, you do two years, you can continue on to a four year degree, or if you would like to transfer out to another institution, we would assist you with that to make sure you have a smooth process from Lincoln College to the institution that you would be um, transferring into. Uh, if you um, don't have a car, students are, uh, we do have our own transportation. So if you need to go to our huge mall, which is Walmart, we will take you there. <laughs> so um, in freshmen, like I said, they are able to have their cars on campus. We have three different styles of residence halls that a student could choose from. You could choose to have a roommate, you can choose an apartment, or you could choose not to have a roommate. And it's really first come first serve. So freshmen are able to reside in either an apartment or uh, not to have a roommate. We do have something new. It's a refer a friend grant. Uh, so for every student that you refer that puts your name down in the application, you could receive a $1,000 uh, grant, uh, or I should say a $1,000 scholarship um, that you could use however you like, as long as they put your name down on the application. So I'm going to put my information in the chat. Um, I would normally contact all of my students personally. So if you apply, um, submit an inquiry, just wanted to get additional information, I would be the one to contact you. So you don't have to worry about bouncing around from person to person. I help with financial aid pretty much all the way up until you get to campus. Um, however, I am going out of the country. I leave tomorrow to go to Jamaica and I'll be back March 1st. So when I, upon my return, <laughs> I will contact everyone. But in my absence, we do have another representative that would be um, able to assist you if you did apply and was wondering what was going on during that time frame that I am away. Uh, our tuition, which includes your meals, room and board, and your books, is uh, roughly $28,200. However, don't end the chat. Um, don't hang up on me because no one ever pays that amount. Uh, realistically, if a student has an EFC of 1000 or less, it's about $9,500 out of pocket to uh, come to Lincoln College. Your books are included. They're rented. So as long as you don't write any love notes in your books, you can return those at no fee. So if you do have um, any additional questions, feel free to reach out to me personally. Um, all students have my personal cell phone number, um, as well as, like I said, my email address and contact information. And then if you would like to um, fill out the inquiry form, just so you can get on our mailing list and we can send you information based off of scholarships, tuition, sports, because we do um, compete at the NAIA, so we offer athletic scholarships as well. Uh, you can fill out that inquiry form and then we'll definitely get in contact with you. So you all have a great evening and thank you so much. Great, thank you so much. And now moving right along, we are going to hear from Webster University. Thank you. So my name is Andrew Lowey. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions at Webster University. And I wanna walk you through some information here and so you can get to know a little bit about Webster and and what we're about and what we're doing. So here's a general overview of the university. We're located in a residential suburb of St. Louis, specifically Webster Groves, Missouri. Smaller university, uh, 2,400 full-time students. So we do not have any large lecture hall classes. In fact, most of the classes are, are capped at 25. There are really no two spots on campus that are farther than about a five or six minute walk away. So definitely a smaller school type of environment. We have over hundred different uh, academic majors in five different colleges and schools. So we have a wide variety of things that are offered. I'm gonna highlight um, some of our programs in the School of Communications and in the Fine Arts, uh, but, but we also do offer a, a wide variety of majors that you can explore as well too. And in addition to that, we have significant study abroad opportunities as well. So if you're interested in study abroad, you should definitely check, check that out. 
We operate on a rolling admissions basis, which basically means we process the applications as they come in. Our preferred application deadline is January 1st. We put that out there because that will maximize your chances of financial aid and scholarships. However, we will absolutely accept applications after that and will in fact uh, even accept them over the summer. But we like to put that date out there just to give you a target to kind of shoot for there. We are test optional uh, like a lot of colleges are, but if, if you uh, do take um, you know, the ACT or SAT, you can kind of see what those figures are there. I have the middle 50% range there for the ACT and SAT if you do uh, take that. Uh, and the overall acceptance rate to the university is around 78%. Um, if you're going into our fine arts programs, there is an audition or portfolio review that you have to do. That's in addition to the academic acceptance. So here's what we're doing in the fine and performing arts uh, at Webster University. You can see it's pretty comprehensive there. We offer all of these specific majors in these individual areas. Um, so uh, if you really want to you know, um, take a deep dive into these programs and get specific degrees in these programs like painting or, or music technology or you know, stage management or ballet, um, any, any design tech theater, we have a wonderful musical theater program as well. We do all those and we do, really, we do, we do them really, really well. So but remember, these also require that, that secondary process, that extra, that extra step there um, in terms of audition or portfolio review, in addition to academic acceptance there. So also want to talk a little bit about our school communications because we have a, one, a lot of wonderful opportunities there. You can see a, a pretty amazing breadth and depth of course offerings here, everything from animation and video game design to a film production major, photography, public relations, sound recording and engineering. The best thing about all of these programs is you get into those majors right away that you know, you'll know you be touching the equipment. If you're a film major, you're gonna check out a digital camera um, during your freshman year and, and use that and, and edit some, some material and take it back to class. So we're very big about getting you into your major right away, whatever that is, if it's a school of communications or if it's biology or, or history or English or whatever. We want you to get into the major right away. That is very important to us. So really, really critical. And that's critical in the School of Communication. So um, we do emphasize that. So like I mentioned, amazing study abroad programs. Uh, internationalism and study abroad is really a big deal here at Webster. You can see these are the locations that are, that are offered. Um, you can study abroad as early as second semester of your freshman year. You can study abroad up to a year uh, if, your, if your major you know, works, works out for you to do that. Um, you don't have to worry about transferring foreign credits, especially when you go to a Webster campus, because you're still at Webster. Um, you're just in a different location. Um, the scholarships and financial aid uh, travel with you, and we offer free airfare through our World Traveler program. So that's how much of an emphasis we put on study abroad, so much so that we're going to pay for your plane ticket to go there and back. So again, that's just a really important component of Webster and what it is that we do. Talk a little bit here about tuition scholarships and financial aid. We do offer a lot of scholarships and financial aid. We do not charge for out-of-state tuition. We do have some talent-based scholarships in, in these areas, but more importantly, what you need to pay attention to is the academic scholarships that start at $13,000 and go up to $19,000. The basic requirement for an academic scholarship is a 2.8 GPA. So if you have that, you're likely going to get an academic scholarship. These figures here, those are for um, each year, all four years. Those are not split up over four years you get that amount every year for four years, as long as you maintain a 3.0 <clears throat> GPA. So we also have a leadership scholarship uh, available as well too. And we have a full tuition scholarship. We also offer diversity scholarships as well too. So bottom line is there is a lot of financial aid and scholarships uh, that are offered here uh, at Webster. So we want you to take advantage of those. A couple of examples of what our graduates are doing after, after graduation here. Um, so that really, uh, that if there are any country and Western fans, that is Garth Brooks, he, one of our uh, graduates uh, helped engineer his, uh, his album there. Um, and then uh, we have um, Kimberly Stewart, who, who uh, is an executive producer for Manchester by the Sea. Um, Leah works at Disney. We have a number of graduates working at Disney, both in animation and other parts. Um, also wanted to point out uh, that we have people working in communications. Uh, Janae is the is the is a producer at the local NBC affiliate here in St. Louis, and then a couple of other examples here. Um, what I want to end with is this slide here, just to kind of give you, um, you know, a real good idea of what we're all about. I mean, fit is so important in this process, and so um, so this is Webster. Okay, I'm not going to read these because you can see these and you can read these yourself. 
but this is who we are. And so if you're, if, if this is, you're looking for is Webster the right fit, this is exactly the kind of student that comes to Webster. So I like pointing this out because it really gives you a good idea of, um, of what we're all about there and the kind of student that does come to Webster. And then lastly, here is our contact information. Lemuel, um, who works with everybody from the Chicago area, he's gonna put that information in the chat as well too, but that is our contact information for us to, to get in touch with us. So um, each of us works with a certain area of the state of Illinois there. So anyway, thanks for tuning in and um, please be in touch if you have any questions. Great, thank you so much. And just a reminder um, to please utilize that Q&A feature. We've gotten some questions that have started to come in, which is great. Um, and also if there's a specific institution that you're wanting to answer that question, make sure that you address it uh, to them so that you can get the specific information that you need. So we are now going to turn it over to our representative from Florida Southern College. Great, good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Anna and I am the admissions representative from Florida Southern for pretty much all of the, the Midwest. Um, it's so great to be here. Um, but basically, I just want to get started with some basic information about Florida Southern. Um, we were founded in 1883, which actually makes us one of the oldest private colleges in the state of Florida. And we are home to about 3,000 total students. And 60% of those students are from the uh, state of Florida and 40% are from out of state, representing nearly all 50 states and 50 foreign countries as well. Uh, we are located right in between Tampa and Orlando and Lakeland, Florida. So it's a pretty sweet spot to be in for sure. Um, we do have over 70 programs of study as well as 16 pre-professional tracks across our five schools and our most popular majors are biology, um, marine biology, business, nursing, and theater as well. Um, we are a liberal arts college at our core, so you're going to get a well-rounded degree uh, no matter what you choose to major in. And also, regardless of what you major in, we do emphasize engaged and experiential learning, which basically just means that we believe in the power of learning by doing and really immersing our students in their field as soon as possible. Um, and we're able to offer this engaged learning experience in part because of our small class sizes. Um, the average class size is 18 students and our student to faculty ratio is 14 to one. And also all of our classes are taught by the professors themselves. And that's just to ensure that you're learning from experts in your field at all times. As an extension of this engaged learning experience, we do offer these three guarantees. Um, and the first that I'd like to highlight is study abroad. Um, so there are several different options for studying abroad, but our most popular option is our junior journey program, which is a seven to 10 day trip over school breaks in either your junior or senior year. Um, there are both domestic and international trip options. And the best part about these trips is that they are at little to no additional cost to our students. Um, we also guarantee internships to all of our students, regardless of major. Um, and students have the option to do internships locally during the school year, or you can go closer to home or explore somewhere new uh, for internships during the school breaks. And that last guarantee is to graduate in four years or less. And we're able to guarantee this because kind of in addition to everything that I've already shared, um, students are also paired with an academic advisor in their field of study as soon as you are on campus. Um, and you meet with them several times per year to make sure that you're on track for graduation. Uh, we're also very transfer credit friendly, so you might also be able to come into college with some college credits under your belt already. Um, to kind of summarize everything that I have shared so far, um, these academic opportunities are really important because they do translate into post-graduation success. And we do have a placement rate of 97% within one year of graduation, with about a third of our students going on to graduate or professional program of some kind, and the remaining two thirds entering the workforce. I know academics are, and outcomes are definitely, you know, an important part of your college experience, but I also want to highlight student life because Florida Southern does pride itself on being a true campus community. Um, we actually do require that students live on campus for all 14 years, or oh, sorry, all four years, and our 16 housing options uh, do include on-campus dorms as well as, as apartment complexes near campus that are set aside for us. Aside from housing, we do have uh, 20 NCAA Division II athletic teams, and there's also several different opportunities to participate in sports in the club and intramural level as well. We also have over 100 student clubs and organizations, uh, ranging anywhere from Greek life and campus ministries to special interest clubs and organizations like our cat club. Um, basically, there are tons of ways to get involved and connect with other students and show your school spirit as well. 
So now that I've shared all about Florida Southern, um, let's kind of talk through how to officially become a Florida Southern moccasin, and that is the snake, not the shoe. Um, first and foremost, you know, it is 100% is totally free to apply uh, to Florida Southern regardless of how you do so, and our application is available on our website as well as Common Application and Coalition. Um, if you're a senior, applications are due by March 1st. Um, we can accept them after that, but the priority deadline is March 1st. And then for juniors and seniors, our application, or sorry, juniors and sophomores and anyone younger, um, our applications typically open sometime in May. Um, in addition to the application, we also need your high school transcript and a personal statement. And we are test optional this year, but students are welcome to submit test scores if they'd like to. Um, once we receive all of your application materials, you'll get a decision within three to six weeks. Finally, um, I know that the cost of college can definitely be overwhelming, so every application is automatically considered for an academic-based scholarship, and some of our departments on campus also offer specific scholarships based on audition, portfolio review, interview, or athletic recruitment. Um, we also accept any aid that you receive from the federal government by filing the FAFSA, um, as well as any scholarships um, you receive from outside sources or college savings plans as well. And that just means that you can earn financial aid from a variety of sources. Um, but that's all the information I have for you guys tonight. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Have a great evening. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And again, um, we are getting to kind of the, the later part of our presentations for this session. So please remember to send in any questions that you have. Moving right along, we are now going to hear from the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Hi there, thank you so much for introducing. Um, my name is Elena Seha. I am one of the Illinois admissions advisors. I'm gonna share my screen really quick um, and just talk a little bit about UWM. Um, Milwaukee itself, we are about 90 minutes from Chicago. So it's super convenient. You get that out of state experience. You get to be far away from home, but not too far away that if you wanted to, you can head over on the Amtrak and head right home. So it's super nice. Um, the campus itself, contrary to popular belief, we are not located downtown. We are more on like the Upper East Side of Milwaukee. So it's a residential area. Um, our campus is all close knit together. Um, and then we like to build our buildings up rather than um, sideways. So it really creates for a really good community at UWM. We have our Lake Michigan five minutes from our campus. So that's something that our students really enjoy to just head over there and hang out. Um, another opportunity that we have here is we have over, um, we have a lot of connections to the Fortune 500s around the area. So if you are interested in like going to um, do some internships and co-ops, those are all going to be opportunities for you. We have the opportunity for study abroad for our students to go to 35 plus countries. We have a study abroad office that will help you with all of that as well. And then we also are an R1 institution. And what this means is we do the most research possible on a college campus. Um, so we're gonna do it on all fields of study. We will do nursing, engineering, two completely different majors will come together and do it as well. So it's really cool to see and participate. And you can start participating as soon as your freshman year, which is really nice and a good opportunity for you to get some hands-on experience with that as well. As for our sports, we offer three um, tiers in athletics. We have division one, club sports and intramurals. So we do have 15 sports such as basketball, swimming, soccer, and the only baseball D1 in the state of Wisconsin. So other than that, there's just a whole lot to do at UW-Milwaukee and different opportunities for you to come visit us on campus. We are going to start our campus tours again in March. We have admitted student days. We have specific Illinois visit days and transfer visit days and other things as well. And many different opportunities for you to connect with your admissions advisor, such as myself. And then as for our application, we are currently test not required until spring 2023. Our application is completely free. We are also rolling admissions, but we do have that priority deadline that you can see there um, as March 1st and then for our housing, our housing is not like traditional housing. So we have suites rather than traditional dorms where they all share that one communal bathroom. We actually have um, like 
two or three suites that are going to share that one bathroom. So it's really nice and a lot cleaner. So we love that as well. Um, with your application, what we will need is your high school transcript. Again, we are test not required. So if you wanted to send your test scores, that's completely up to you. We have adjusted our scholarships um, for that as well. So there are some scholarships that you can just receive automatically, um, especially being an Illinois student. We have some automatic scholarships for our Illinois students. Your tuition is cheaper than um, other out-of-state students. It comes in at $12,644. And that is with an automatic MAP grant and um, before any financial aid or any other scholarships that you might receiving. We have a Chancellor Merit Scholarship, which is an automatic one that you get reviewed for. Um, if you qualify, you will receive anywhere from $2,000 to $6,000 for your four academic years. And there's just a lot of really good opportunities as well. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you so much. And now uh, for our last institution, I'm gonna turn it over to Aurora University. Hey everyone, my name is Healy Piscina and I am the Assistant Director of Freshman Admission here at Aurora University. And my name is Anna Dutton. I'm a freshman admission counselor here at AU. So we will get started today just talking a little bit about Aurora University. We're a small private school located in Aurora, Illinois, which is the second largest city in the state of Illinois. We have about 6,200 students, 4,000 of those being undergrad undergraduate students with a very diverse population of students here on campus. The best thing about AU is that your professors get to know who you are. Both Haley and I went to AU and we really got to know our professors within our programs, which helps you with internships and job opportunities along the way. So our average class size is 25 students. We only have two lecture halls, which are even really considered lecture halls here on campus that seat 72 students. So no teacher assistants, all your professors get to know you by name. We have over 50 majors and minors for you to choose from. And we also have division three athletics, which if you wanna continue with athletics into your college career, you definitely can do so. If you're interested, be sure to connect with coach. But what's really nice about AU is that we focus on your academics here. So you're a student first and then an athlete. So what makes AU unique? We have some outstanding fields of study. These are some of our most popular and well-known programs here at AU. But what I wanna highlight is our undecided major. A lot of students don't know what they wanna be when they grow up and that's fine. I felt the same way. I changed my major like three times in college. It's okay to come in undecided. A lot of our students do. So be sure to explore that as well. We also offer double majors here at AU where we build it into the program where you have the ability to double major and graduate in four years, which is unlike a lot of other colleges. We also have plus one programs, which allow you to get your master's in an additional year after you graduate from AU. Another thing we like to emphasize about AU is our retention rate. So our retention rate is 78% while the national average is 64. And we have some things built in to help you while you're here at AU to make that retention rate possible, including first year experience, which is a class you'll take your first semester here at AU, which really helps you dive into and transition into college life because it's much different than high school. And make sure you know all the resources on campus. And then junior mentoring, which is a opportunity within your junior year to meet with one of your faculty members to make sure that everything's set up for senior year. In addition to academic advising and career services like any other college. So now I will pass it along to my colleague Haley to tell you more about AU and applying. Thanks Anna. So if you're interested in AU we have a couple paths for you to be able to um, be admitted to AU. We have our traditional route, which is the um, sending in a test score, either the ACT or an SAT. We typically look for a 19 on the ACT or a 990 on the SAT and a 2.5 high school, high school cumulative GPA. 
Um, on average, uh, we students that are attending AU typically have a 3.2 GPA and usually score around like at that 1130 or that 23 on the ACT, just for some reference. However, because of COVID, we understand that a lot of students weren't able to take a standardized test this past year, or maybe they haven't been able to get the studying in that they would prefer to have had. So we do have a test optional route where we will look at your overall um, transcript and we'll really kind of hone in on your cumulative GPA and some of those English courses and some of our classes are writing intensive and we want to make sure that you have a good foundation uh, before you start at AU. Either way that you apply, our application is always free and we do have rolling admissions. So we accept students really the day before, the weekend before classes start here at AU in the fall. All admitted students receive a merit scholarship that ranges from $3,000 to $15,000. The average scholarship that students receive is $14,000. We do have some other opportunities too. So if you had a parent or grandparent that had attended AU, if you're from out of state, the tuition is the same. We don't um, charge more for you living from being out of state so you can qualify for that grant and we have music and theater scholarships as well and if you are interested in something relating to the Dunham School of Business and Public Policy we also have a prestigious Dunham Scholars Program that comes with an additional $10,000 per year scholarship. So kind of our cost and our value so our sticker price is $26,760 um, for tuition and fees as a commuter student. We don't require students to ever live on campus, but if you choose to live on campus, whether you're local or you kind of have to live on campus, um, around $12,000 is a good amount to kind of plan for, and that can vary depending on meal plans and things like that. It is, um, any students can park on campus too, so all of that's included in your cost. We pride ourselves on being able to make an education affordable for students. And we really like that a lot of our students don't have to borrow as much as if they would have had to attend a different school. And more than 27% of our students graduate without any student loan debt. So we really wanna make sure that the student is not just a good fit for AU, but that we are a good financial fit for the student. So just to kind of wrap up with some fun stuff that goes on at AU, um, we really love to throw parties here at AU. Anything that you attend as a, as a student is free. So you'll see some things here on the slide. We've brought a camel to campus before for hump day, which is really fun. Anytime we have a big event or kind of a ceremony, we love to have balloons and treats. We even had an Easter egg hunt one year where students were able to win free tuition for a year. So you can see that kind of at the top. But Anna's throwing our information in the chat. So feel free to reach out or come visit us if you have any more questions. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of our representatives um, for joining us this evening. Before we finish up, um, we're actually going to pose a question to all of our um, partners here tonight. And so feel free for everyone to turn back on your screen. Um, what we want to know is what advice would you give to someone going through the college search process? And so we'll just go in the same order um, that you presented. So uh, University of New Hampshire, if you'd like to go first. Hey everyone, um, I would definitely say that um, to just always remember that finding the right college is, is really about the match to be made um, as opposed to like a prize to be won. Um, there's probably many matches for you um, out there. Um, and so to find a community that is supportive and welcoming of you and your background, um, rather than like a, a big name or um, something like that is always important to me. Um, and, and really will help you in the process of, of becoming yourself and finding a program that is really supportive for you. Okay, hello again. So my advice would be um, in regards to financial aid. Once you do receive your financial aid award, let I know that's where we typically lose a lot of students or you feel like, okay, um, this is the number one school of my choice, but I can't afford the college. So what I recommend doing is speaking with your admissions counselor, talking to the financial aid office, because usually you, there are resources available for students. I know with Lincoln College, we definitely do a great job at assisting students through the financial aid process. Um, if a student receives their award letter, let's just say it's uh, $7,000 and you really want to come to Lincoln College, however, you know that you're, you can't afford um, to pay that amount. If a student comes to us, 
let us know the situation. There are things that we can do on the back end or we can assist students with additional grants or applying for scholarships to help you. So never feel that the when you receive your award letter, that that's it i can't there's nothing else out here available for me because that's what we're here for to help you when it comes to financial aid so reach out to your counselors reach out to anyone that you can reach out to so that you can go to the number one school of your choice my advice would be to trust your instinct trust your gut especially when you are visiting campus i know campus visits have been restricted lately but hopefully those are slowly going to start coming back but uh, I've had a number of students um, who, after they enroll at Webster, uh, Lemuel and I will talk to them and we'll ask them, why did they enroll? And a lot of times, well, you know, during my campus visit, I could just tell this is where I wanted to be. And it just felt right. And I felt comfortable and I could see myself going to school here. So fit, uh, as Evan talked about, is, is really huge and match is huge. So trust your instinct, trust your gut. I, I know sometimes you think, well, it should be more than just the place felt right. Um, but that's a pretty big one, okay? so. Um, so, so definitely trust your, your, your feeling and your gut and your instinct when you're, when you're there for a campus visit. I definitely agree with that, but I also, you know, definitely be patient. There can be a lot of waiting that comes with the college admissions process. Um, and you might want an answer, you know, right away, but sometimes that, that doesn't come. Um, so definitely be patient, but also use your admissions counselors. Like we're only here to help. Um, we're here to be in your corner and have your back. So if you need anything, like, please don't hesitate to reach out. I promise we're not scary. I would echo Evan and Andrew um, and just add, like, just make the decision for yourself, like without the influence of others, like maybe you have a friend who's also applying somewhere and you're like, oh, I should go follow them. Like, don't do that. Um, go check out the college campus for yourself, see how it feels, and really just see the resources that an institution has for you um, and the opportunities that you're going to be able to explore once you're there. Definitely just echoing what everyone else has said. As a first generation college student, I remember this was such a daunting process. Um, like Anna said, know that your admission counselors are here to help you. There's nothing better than when a student comes to me and is just overwhelmed with the college application process or search process. We can just sit down because at the end of the day, whether it's AU, another school, I want to make sure it's the best fit for you and everything makes sense. So know that there's people in your corner and here to help you. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing some of that wisdom with our participants this evening. Well, at this time, that is going to wrap up um, the fair. And so what? Uh, just a few housekeeping items as you're exiting. Um, after you leave the Zoom call, you will um, be given a quick survey just to tell us about your experience. And so please feel free to fill that out. That really helps StriveScan as they plan future virtual fairs just like this one. Um, there are additional sessions happening right after this at the top of the hour at seven o'clock, as well as tomorrow as part of the second day for the Illinois ACAC College Fair. And then again, as I mentioned at the beginning, a recording will be made available at strivescan.com slash Illinois uh, within about a week or so. Um, so thank you again to all of our colleges and universities for attending this evening. Thank you students, parents, mentors, friends for joining us. And this is going to wrap up that session. Have a great evening.